That's right. We're on live. We're going to get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? Today, I have a very special guest from Living With Low Vision, and she's going to talk about her physical abuse, how she made it out of it, what brought it on, and things of that nature. So I hope you are ready to listen to her story as we sit back and bring to you from Living With Low Vision, Fernando, right? Yeah. Okay. How are you doing today? I'm okay. Okay. Uh, you are... I'm doing okay. Um, early in the morning. What time is it over there in uh, Australia? It is 11.38 p.m. Okay, 11.38, okay. Big difference, big difference. Well, anyway, um, you, you've you come to talk to us about um, abuse, right? Yeah. Okay, well, it's your show, and hopefully someone can learn something from this because that's what it's all about. So you take it over and talk to us and let us know what's going on. Okay. Well, in 2014, I was working in a government job and I was like high on the fumes on the power of, you know, working a nine to five job, especially with a person who has a disability, which there's a lot. Um, I actually met this guy and it was a roller coaster. So within the first Two or three months he moved into my apartment which i lived in a studio back then um he did you know try to like woo me with flowers roses and things like that but i remember once the first instant of him being physical with me was that i had a bottle of champagne that was given to me for my birthday by some work colleagues and he drank it all. So I remember we were arguing over that and next thing I knew that day, he was trying to smother me with a pillow. Mm. Um, the next, I couldn't breathe, I pushed him off. Um, he blamed it on the alcohol and I thought, you know what, it could be the alcohol. So I forgave him the first time. The second time, I think because I came home a bit too late, I was out with some work colleagues and he slapped me and punched me. And the third and final time was when, I remember I was cooking in my apartment and he decided to choke me. He wasn't drunk. So I couldn't blame it on the alcohol. I knew that he wasn't stable. So he choked me to the point where I almost passed out. I made an excuse. I said, oh, you know what? I was meant to have drinks with some friends. I'll be back. And I actually went to the police. Um, Cause I knew in my mind, if he did it to me drunk, did it to me sober, he's gonna do it to me worse. And I, next time I'd be in hospital. So I actually ended up going to the police that night and he was, they would try to subpoena him because I got a, um, a restraining order, whatever he would call them, um, AVOs. And he actually broke it that, that same day. So I remember I was leaving work and he chased me down the street. And me, it was a flight or fight situation. So I actually hid in a, in a chemist. And I asked the staff if they could hide me and tell them police is on their way. Because he, first he broke the restraining order or AVO that we call him here. <laughs> Secondly, he actually did try to pretend to be a police officer to know where I was 
and unfortunately I had to go to court it was very quick so it took me months to process I had to go to court three days later for the AVO so I don't know how it is over there in the States but here in Australia um, women who have been abused um, they actually put them in a safe room and what you do is when you get to court you have to register yourself he didn't register himself when he came into court so what happened was that they told me he didn't register so he wasn't in the court so I had to speak to the judge so I was with a police officer escorting me to the judge and I saw him and actually ran to the corner and hid so they realized it was him and he was arrested on the spot for the charges of assault breaking the order and impersonating police officer now oh. that I look back of it I think I was very ballsy to leave up three times but the mental toll after that was I, it was way too severe. It took me at least two years to recover over those only three incidents. Okay, be before we talk about that, because that's very important as well, let me uh, backtrack and, and, and uh, ask you, you, you talked about the signs that you, that, that you had seen. You, you, were, you were at that point making excuses for, for him doing what he was doing, right? Yeah. Uh, do you think that, okay, um, I'm gonna ask this question. You can answer it if you want. Uh, by you being mm -hmm. visually, by you being visually impaired, may have had some play into why you stayed. Um, you know, because most uh, visually impaired people probably feel that well, it'll be hard for me to find someone this, that, and the third. Do you think that may have played anything? I actually did think that, but mind you, like I said before. I thought if he was drunk, if he could do this to me when he was drunk, could do this to me when he was sober, I didn't want to imagine what was going to happen next. And that was the last straw? That was the last straw for me. And sometimes I think of women that's been doing it for years, like sitting and putting up with that for years. I didn't think I could ever go through that. Did you have a... three it was like the baseball, three strikes and you're out. Did you have a child at the time? Yes, but she wasn't in that environment. Okay. And did you ha have anybody at the time to speak with while this was going on, or you had to endure this all yourself? I was fortunate that I had supportive um, work colleagues because um, they saw me the next day after the assault. Um, I, like I don't keep in touch with them unfortunately but I was quite lucky I had supportive work colleagues um, at that time me and my family we were estranged um, that brought us back together um, my friends didn't really understand they just think, of, oh no, I should just go into the police because, you know, it's just for being dramatic. Um, but I didn't have like much support. I couldn't. Luckily, the police were quite supportive of me. <clears throat> um, they would actually, I think they dropped me off at the, at the train station. And from the train station, I had to meet up with my dad at his work. So I was quite lucky about that. The police tried to protect me as much as they could. Okay. Wow. Um, so after that, after you were able to quote unquote get out of it, did did you did he still try to try to uh, contact you after? Yes, he kept on sending messages with fake numbers. Um, he made threats towards me my younger brother and my father 
um, threats of kidnapping, torturing that extreme. Now that I think, now I think about it, it sounds like a plot to a movie, but it's um, it was the last. It was like a good four or five weeks of him text messaging me, threatening me, and me going to the police to report everything that he sent me. Now, because practically every week, I had to go to the police station. Now there was. Now I'm asking one more, another question. Was there any? Uh, before all this had happened, was there anything that had given uh, you any type of inkling that this guy may be uh, a bit abusive? Like, I understand, you know, things that he was doing, but this just, I mean, was he nice in the beginning? Talk about that. He was quite nice, very charming in the beginning, but just the controlling, waiting for me, like, outside of my home, uh, when I finished work so the, back then I thought oh he's really insecure he really cares about me that was what was going through my mind back then oh this guy's so cool because he cares about me he's waiting for me making sure I get home safe <clears throat> but now I'm out of that situation I knew no that is the circle of um, domestic violence wow okay now um Let's talk about the you, you were going to talk about earlier, the the uh, effects in which it uh, had on you. Talk about that and how long. I, I mean, are you still dealing with it? And you know, focus on that issue. Well, it took me a few years to process it because, mind you, the second time we went to court, they sent him to jail or to prison. The third time we went to court, he was released, but he couldn't contact me for two years. But the fourth time, two weeks before our fourth date, um, he actually killed himself. Wow. And do you, I know you probably don't, but um, I'll just ask the question, do you know why? Is it, it, it couldn't have been because you're, you and he couldn't be together, you think? No, I think something might have happened to him in jail because they did have a strong case. Him, like I said, you know, breaking the court, the AVO, impersonating police officer, they did have a strong case. But I think he was too scared to go back to jail. Now, mentally, how has that affected you as far as you dating other individuals? Um, and just thinking about the, the trauma that you had gone through with him, how, how are you dealing well, with him? I think actually led me to a worse situation. I wasn't mentally prepared. I thought I was okay. I thought in my mind, he's dead. He's not going to do anything to me. I'm okay. And I jumped in another toxic relationship, which unfortunately I can't talk about. Mm. Um, but it did take me a good three years to recover with counseling, like a lot of counseling and learning about the cycle of abuse. So it took that relationship and another relationship to realize that I am happy being on my own. I don't have to be dependent on a partner. Were you, what you were saying is you went from one abusive uh, relationship to another? Yeah. Did you at any point in time say, maybe it's me that's, that's doing this and know, knowing that it's not you, but like you try to find reasons for why this is happening. Did you, did you say, well, maybe I'm, you know, it, it's me. I need to work on me or it's just, you know, it, it's the, you know, it's not to say that yeah well i actually thought it was me that uh, liked the drama liked that negative attention um i did live with the guilt because i actually thought if i didn't talk to the police he would be still alive a mother wouldn't lost wouldn't have lost a child a brother wouldn't have lost his brother or a sister wouldn't have lost her brother i lived with that guilt for a good two and a half years 
until I realized it wasn't my fault why he did what he did. And what took you to get over that guilt? What took you to to surpass all that after two years? You, you just went to therapy or you just found it in your mind to say, hey, it wasn't me. It was he who was acting up or it was they who was doing that. Well, I actually did a course twice because I wanted to understand it much more better. It was called um, Living Beyond the Beast. So we got to, I got to learn what signs to look out for and what I would like to have in a partner in the future. So with that course that I studied twice already, I see some of my friends who are in toxic relationships. And I'm like, should I talk? Shouldn't I talk? Should I say what I think? Um, um, like there were times that I actually said something and I lost a friend out of it. Um, because in my mind, I thought I was looking out with it for them, and unfortunately, I was right. <laughs> not, not to sound conceited or anything like that. No, no. And why are you saying that? I, and I know this is a, it's a movie, but I've seen movies like this where where people, their friends, um, were in abusive relationships, and they um, told them, uh, "We will," you know, that they were going to speak up and whatnot. And they were like, "Well, if you do, we're no longer friends," and things of that nature. So, yeah, I, I understand wholeheartedly what you what you mean. But by that same token, give uh, the people some. Uh, things that you've learned you said that you had taken a course twice uh that they can look for if they are in uh toxic relationships that they you know probably can you know start the 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 the, the process of getting out of well i would only say the early signs i would actually suggest is if they call you more than five times a day that's not healthy if they wait for you outside your work of employment or outside your house every day that isn't healthy it's not that they care it's a, it's a sense of power they want to have that power could be male female um could be anyone but they want to have that control over you they want you to be submissive to that dominant personality anything else i would suggest take as much therapy if you need to take time off work or commitments do it because mental health is the most important thing now um the, i want to go back to the the abuse and i know it may be hard to talk about it like the times in which he didn't do uh perform these uh forms of abuse how was the relationship it was I would say like walking on eggshells. So I was waiting for him to erupt. It was like a time bomb. So I knew that once I got home, turn off my phone or drain all the battery on my phone so he wouldn't go through my phone and accuse me of so much stuff or make sure my laptop, hide the case, like take the cords with me to work so he wouldn't go through my laptop. Um, he would see things that weren't even there. He accused me of cheating with my colleagues, my colleagues um, who were happily married back then. Mm. Um, if you feel that you need to walk on eggshells, it's not a good environment. Out of curiosity, was he visually impaired? No, he wasn't. Do you think that he had in his mind, and I know you can't, or couldn't think of, <clears throat> excuse me, you couldn't, you can't, uh, you know, put across what he was thinking that, <clears throat> that because you were visually impaired, he was gonna uh, take control, more of a control, even more so of a control issue with you. You think that may have been the case? I think it was, cause most of the attacks happen at nighttime. And cause of my condition of um, Nyclotopia, I think he knew that I couldn't run. He thought, okay, she's blind at night, so she's not going to do anything. 
And how did you meet him, if I may inquire? I actually met him on the train. <laughs> oh, okay. And that, when, once you all met, was the was was the conversation, you know, a, a, a um, night? It was nice in the beginning, but like I said, I didn't realize the signs. Okay, and um, if I knew the signs back then. I think everything would be different. And you mentioned that you you had a little girl. Was that his? No. How did how were you able to keep the 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 the, the little girl from you know experiencing something like this? Was she with someone at the time? Well, considering I was working quite far from home, she was living with my parents. So I would see her on the weekends. When you had spoken with your parents about the abuse that you had encountered, again, uh, did they believe you? What was the uh, situation when that occurred? They were quite supportive. I actually rang my dad. Well, actually, the police, I don't know if I rang my dad or if the police rang my father to let him know where I was and to come pick me up. So my, my dad drove an hour away to come get me. And I think it was like one or two o'clock in the morning. Okay. Wow. This was the me. I, I, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to to um, come on and talk about it in hopes of helping others. Because as I mentioned in the, in the top of the show, that's what this this channel is all about. Give the uh, audience, uh, you know, some suggestions. Give them, you know, some some things that that you were able to do in order to get out of this particular relationship. And it's, a, it's fortunate that you were able to make it out because some people uh, over the years haven't. Uh, talk to them about what they can do and in, 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 in terms of helping themselves. Give the, the audience some suggestions in terms of what they could do in order to, to uh, bring themselves out of uh, abusive relationships in, in, in terms of, you know, getting away and, and possibly, you know, having a better life because this isn't the life for them. And it's and it's a great deal yeah. it's fortunate that you you um survived there are others that may not uh yeah. who haven't so what what do you suggest i would actually suggest to have a backup plan this is what i learned for the course make sure that you have a backup plan make sure on your phone could be android or apple to have the sos messages in case anything happens so at least you press, I think it's on the Samsung, you press the home button three times. It sends a message of SOS and takes photos and video and audio of what's happening. Um, I would suggest to go to your local, could be men's shed. I don't know if you have that in the US. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. I, I, know. The male, cause I know these women that do become abusive as well mm -hmm. to make sure they have a contact with them or write everything down so at least you know what like hide it in a safe place if you have a journal keep it at work of what happened so at least you have a documentation and you can show someone in case law enforcement don't believe you and also I just want to add that whether you're blind or whether you have any type of impairment or anything of this sort, abuse, you know, it's, 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 it's just it's open to everyone. So that is, that is one of the reasons why I want to uh, name it Abuse in the Blind Community as well. So uh, I want to, uh, do you have any last words that you want to say? Um, no. Was it hard talking about it? Actually, this is not my first interview i've actually done a few but with um another identity okay so it's like the first time me going public with my voice my face yeah are you and you don't have any problem right before i air it no i want to you're a strong woman i want to thank you for for coming on the show um wow uh tell everybody about your your um youtube channel and what they can find on your youtube youtube channel Currently, you won't find anything. I haven't <laughs> vlogged anything. Um, my life has been a bit chaotic with the pandemic and taking care of um, a four-year-old with autism who has constant meltdowns and 
takes advantage of mummy's vision loss. <laughs> um, but there will be an announcement. I've actually put it on my Facebook. I haven't put it on my Instagram yet. I don't know if you saw it on my Living Low Vision Facebook page. But next week, I'll be getting my first seeing eye dog. So I'll be documenting that and hopefully before Christmas that video will come out. Okay. Well, it was a pleasure. It was really, yeah, really a pleasure fun. for talking and um, finally got it together. The time difference yeah. is, is like 17 hours, but I want to thank you for coming. You have become a regular on this show and if any anytime you want to come back on, you're welcome to, uh, to do so. Yeah. Okay, we'll do. All right, you take it easy and, and good night, and uh, I'll, I'll I'll text you tomorrow. Okay, cool. All right, bye bye. Okay, bye. Right. Bye. <laughs>